All right, so we have a brand new batch of spoilers here um, that have been released the last couple days since the last spoiler video. And we're just going to start off with which this might be this might be my favorite Lorcana artwork. I mean, I'm a big Donald Duck guy. I love Donald Duck. I'm a fan of cartoon characters in top hats. And let's just be honest, it's Don Riz Duck right now. I mean, look at this guy. So he's a four cost inkable emerald character. Of course, can't forget that. Um, two attack, five blocking. Can quest for two, so pretty solid. Um, is a shift three, which is also pretty solid, which tells me we might be getting maybe a one drop Donald Duck. Um maybe another two drop we'll see and the effect is allow me at the start of your turn each player may draw a card now the first thing you might think is well okay your opponent's getting a card too but you know emerald has been really trying to get a lot of draw power now think of this paired with the secret agent daisy right where the daisy um, makes your opponent discard and now th think of it you each of you draw a card with Donald and then Daisy makes your opponent discard a card and if you have Prince John you can draw another card so as people have been saying on Twitter don't let this kind face deceive you because it's not as kind as you might think and by itself it's like okay your opponent's also getting a card but you're questing for two lore he has five blocking so and yes he is a perfect gentleman so i'm in love with this card if for anything the artwork love it um this one's actually interesting christopher robin an amber character uh six cost is inkable and two attacks six blocking so kind of big will always be together is the effect oh can quest for two lore also Whenever you ready this character, if you have two or more other characters in play, gain two lore. So this is actually, this actually combos really well with the Amber like Rockstar Stitch deck where you're playing a lot of low cost characters and you're drawing cards. So whenever you ready this character, if you have two or more other characters in play, gain two lore. So hopefully you put yourself in a position where you, you were able to play a bunch of small characters and thanks to cards like Lamp, uh, maybe playing them for free and Stitch being able to draw and then you can just gain two lore just, just like that with this guy. And he also quests for two. So I actually think that this is a pretty good card for Amber. Not gonna lie. I actually kind of like this a lot. Plus, it's cool getting the Winnie the Pooh cards. Next, another Amber card, World's Greatest Criminal Mind. It's a song, three cost, inkable. Um, banish chosen character with five or more. So this is a good piece of removal for Amber. So it's almost like the opposite of Befuddle. So like you would use Befuddle in um the early game sure only bounces back to hand but similar sort of thing it like it, it removes it from the board this takes out really any of your opponent's big characters as long as they don't have wars so this still doesn't affect um Cusco it doesn't affect Cogsworth but I mean, it's it's a good piece of removal that I think Amber really, really needs. So I like this. Plus, it's a song. Plus, it's inkable. And it only costs three. Um, so ignore Sorcerer's Spellbook. We already knew about that. Here we have Queen of Hearts. Another Queen of Hearts. The third one. Um, costs two. Inkable. Two attack, two defense. Has rush quest for one lore. So the question with this card becomes... Do you play this over Gaston? Gast now Gaston doesn't have Rush, um, but he has four attack. Now, I am personally thinking you might be playing this over Gaston because of the Rush and because you want to play this in the early game. 
yes, it doesn't get over characters like Olaf or something early on, but it can get over most one drops. Like, it, I think this, I think this is good. It can't get over like the Simba bodyguard, which kind of blows, but I think the rush is too good early in, like in the early stage. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I think <sighs> it, it would need some testing. I think it, it'd be better than Gaston, even with less attack. All right, we have a legendary revealed Sisu, or size I've never seen this movie. Um, not inkable, but only cost four, so not inkable isn't the biggest deal. Uh, two attack, four blocking, quest for two lore. Whenever this character quests, look at the top two cards of your deck. You may put one into your hand and put the rest on the bottom of your deck. So this is develop your brain on legs. It only costs four, so it's not like the biggest, you know, cost to play. It quests for two. And like, obviously you're seeing this card more in the mid game. And what's funny is like, you get that effect whenever the character quests. So I think almost replacing this, almost replacing your develop your brains with this, like makes sense. Sure, you get the develop your brain is nice to have turn one if that's the only one drop you have, but like waiting it out and getting this and being able to dig through your deck every time and you're gaining lore because you're doing it every time you quest is really, really good. And I think it replaces cards like develop your brain. The only trouble is if you play this and your opponent is able to remove it while the ink is drying, then you're really getting no value off of it. But like at the same time, if your opponent's targeting this, that means they're not targeting another one of your characters that might be doing something. So I kind of think that this is a must include in Sapphire. Um, it's pretty darn good. I like it a lot. Um, like this is better than Gaston, right? The new Gaston. Um, the six sapphire because you can only do that when he's played this you do it every time she quests so I like this a lot next we have another song legend of the sword and the stone two cost inkable glad we're seeing more inkable songs um chosen character gains challenger plus three this turn so this is just this is functionally a removal piece like if you need that extra bit to take out an opponent's larger character like this is really good and i do kind of think that amethyst could use this for a more offensive game i'm curious to see like where people lie with this because like you can if you have enough ink which like five ink isn't that big a deal i mean you can play rafiki who has rush and pair him with this card to give him five three and maybe take out a bigger that would take out a lot of your opponent's bigger characters so like if you're interested in that combo like i don't think this is something you run at like four i think of the emerald um amethyst deck like would you if you're playing emerald and amethyst would you run this over megara who gives you i think plus two but is also a body but at the same time you can just sing this for free so maybe this has better value even though it's not a character on the board um i don't know again that'll be pretty fun to test with um verana just a five cost five five vanilla for two lore i mean like i yeah the stats are nice but I don't know. I think there's just better emerald cards. Um, Flavor Sham. This is in French. Um, so I'll have, I'll have to look for the translation. Another Cheshire Cat. The art's really cool on this. Two cost, inkable, three, two, one lore, vanilla solid not a bad two drop just has more attack but like i would still probably go with flynn rider because of the effect and <laughs> this is man i like had to do a double take when i saw this art oh my gosh 
Nizma, three cost games, one lore. Again, you're playing it just kind of for its attack and defense stats. It's just a vanilla. Not sure how much play it's actually going to see. Um, fidget. Um, and this just means that it's evasive. So Ruby gets another evasive card, which actually... Might see play. I mean, like more and more of the Ruby Amethyst decks are playing these evasive characters. You might see this as a decent stat line. It's basically a Ruby Peter Pan. Like maybe you run two of this in a Ruby in a Ruby deck. It's like it's basically a Ruby Peter Pan. So actually, I think this is a solid addition. Um, another mini mouse, another evasive. So <sighs> doesn't have the same offense. So it's not going to do much against your opponent's evasive characters and your opponent's evasive characters. Well, this one only has two blocking. Oh man, I don't know. Like, it gains two lore for only three. And it's inkable. <sighs> That's a tough one. Part of me leans towards this. Just because you get two lore, such a low cost and evasive, the value is really good. And the biggest drawback being it only has one attack, three defense. <sighs> like if you're trying to be more aggressive in terms of getting a lot of lore, obviously you play this. But if you want to have a bigger evasive body on the board, you would play this. So maybe you play both. I mean, you could just play both, honestly, if you really want to. Um, And was that everything? Yeah, so those are, that's kind of the last of the spoilers. Um, obviously, my favorite one is this. I mean, that's just, that's just beautiful. What can I say? But, all right.